Hi guys, did you miss me? <laughs> My name is Athena Island and we are talking about AI products. Today I invited Sergei Musienko, who is the CEO and founder of Atlas, which is a medical company. Hey, Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Do you want to sit here? Yeah. The first question about your background. What yeah. was your interest, I don't know, in childhood? <laughs> <laughs> Should I introduce myself first? Or? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, well, I'm Sergei so. Musienko, I'm the CEO for Atlas Biomed. I'm, a, I'm actually I'm a mathematician, and my, actually the specialty is called Applied Physics and Maths. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, the only specialty you get from Moscow Institute of Physics and Technologies. Mm -hmm. That's where I studied in Moscow. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, I, I like calling this uh, like a Russian version of MIT, <laughs> uh, yeah. which is actually good. Yeah. So I was studying like maths and statistics and physics uh, and its applications. Mm -hmm. And then um, somehow I switched to biology. And by somehow, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but after graduating, you just I, crossed the road. I crossed the road <laughs> <laughs> and entered another building. Yes, <laughs> very similar to that. Actually, uh, I, I, I don't know. I went. I went for my first job to to a person mm -hmm. who was uh, actively developing like biological and medical applications, trying to increase the healthy lifespan of people. Mm -hmm. And this is when I got into this topic and mm -hmm. then started to kind of educate myself and uh, did a lot of educations. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to study at Singularity University, mm -hmm. um, like it's a think tank in Mountain in, in California. Mm -hmm. And this is where basically the, the whole idea behind Atlas, where it came from, from so that place. Atlas? Atlas. Is a company? <laughs> yes. <It's> a company. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're creating what we call an ecosystem for preventative medicine. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make disease optional mm -hmm. and we're trying to make people live healthier mm -hmm. and to make basically like to prevent the chronic conditions. Mm -hmm. So the way we do is, uh, the way we do it is we have several tests. We have two tests that we sell mm -hmm. directly to the consumers, but also, uh, but also through the doctors. Mm -hmm. It's the DNA test and the microbiome test. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, both can be purchased online and um, we deliver them mostly, well, almost all across Europe. Mm -hmm. And, well, the DNA test is quite self-explaining, uh, I guess. It's, I mean, you're, you have to spit in a tube, send it to the lab, we analyze your DNA, we tell you, here's your disease risks, here's how you can you know, prevent them by changing your lifestyle, etc. Mm -hmm. et so microbiome. It's a different story that is working with uh, well stool samples, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, probably we have one of the largest poo collections in Europe as of today. <laughs> Are you proud of that? I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Might end up opening a museum. But, uh, uh, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I have my stem cells also. You, you know. have your, your stem my cells. No, yeah, my oh, person. Nice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm also very proud of so that. Yeah, just send us your poo, and, and that's a full collection. <laughs> Yes. Uh, and we're, what we're doing is we're analyzing the bacteria that lives in, in, you know, in, your, in your column. Mm -hmm. And it's called microbiome, mm -hmm. like the gut microbiome. And we're analyzing them by, by you know, reading the bacterial DNA. We're able to tell you how many of different types of bacteria are there in your gut. Mm -hmm. And then basically what, it, what does it mean? So how that can affect your disease, how that may affect your inflammation mm -hmm. and what, what you can do to improve the balance of your gut bacteria, mm -hmm. how you can diversify it. And what your gut feeling tells you. And what, you get, what is your gut feeling, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're very similar to that. Um, and so it's, it's not two separate tests. So if you do both, I mean, it's like um, they create a joint report, which is more accurate than, you know, if you do one test. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, this is what we say, what, this is what I mean by ecosystem. You know, by adding, integrating more data of different sources into the same system, we can highly increase the accuracy of prediction of certain diseases. And actually, this was one of the main criticisms for the DNA tests for quite a while now, because since the Human Genome Project, we had, we had this idea that, all right, we have the human genome, now we can effectively predict you know, any forms of cancer, diabetes, obesity, whatever. Parkinson. Parkinson's, yeah, anything. Just mm -hmm. you know, name the condition and we'll find the gene for it. Mm -hmm. So that concept didn't really work. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, the idea being, with complex diseases, I mean, they're often called multifactorial. So mm -hmm. that's, I mean, there are multiple factors, mm -hmm. lifestyle, microbiome, inflammation, environment, all that plays a huge role in whether you will or will not get the disease. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's the main idea behind us is very simple, like try to build holistic approach to health. Mm -hmm. So get more data about each individual and use that for prediction. 
which takes us to the AI application section. So now talking about AI, yeah. as far as I understand, you are using ML? Yes, that is correct. So and we not, don't not long time, yes? Yeah, um, well, quite quite a while with, with microbiome. Um, mm -hmm. The thing is, <clears throat> with microbiome, there's no like a normal reference, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's not like going to the you know to the medical lab and you know giving your blood for analysis for like uh, measuring glucose level in the blood, where mm -hmm. you have a very clear reference which is normal and which is abnormal. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing like this as micro in microbiome because it's more or less like 600 different types of bacteria, which is uh, quantitative, not just qualitative. Mm, so it's like a 500 dimensional space where you have the vector. Mm -hmm. And basically um, you have to define the norm or what's normal across different populations. So this is where the machine learning comes really handy because what you can do is we, you can take the clouds of people who have certain disease, let's say mm -hmm. Crohn's disease, for example, which is inflammatory bowel disease, and compare it with the microbiome samples from healthy individuals, and then use the machine learning to actually identify the differences, the different patterns, mm -hmm. which define what's normal and what's, you know, what's mm -hmm. happening with people having mm -hmm. certain disease. It is a correlation, right? So it's not, there's a lot to learn about the causality of these things, but we can see for many conditions, we can see a very, very clear and very distinctive correlations. So what's considered healthy and what's unhealthy. But as far as I understand, you have just European data set, right? We have different, we have, well, if you're considering Russians, Europeans, <laughs> then yes. Otherwise we have different contexts for different geographies. Mm -hmm. For example, the, 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 part, the group, of the, the part of the company that's uh, operating in Russia have their own mm -hmm. like, context and their own data. In Europe, mm -hmm. we have our own data set, of course. And um, ideally, this should be separate for every geography where you operate. Mm -hmm. Yes. So right. you, you've never been to Asia or States? No, not yet. Of course, okay. we're looking to those geographies for sure. But uh, I mean, that's, that's a like, kind of so forward-looking plan. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, so you already told about benefits to businesses, to normal people, and about geography. And um, can you tell me more about data set, about architecture, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. about which kind of data do you use to train your neural yeah, networks? Yeah, so right now the models that we use, the predictive models we use, um, where we already use the AML, is mostly around microbiome. So we use that just for the microbiome at the moment. However, we have several very interesting research ongoing at the moment where we're using a combined data sets of genetics and microbiome and lifestyle data to mm -hmm. actually separate you know, different cohorts of people trying to analyze the correlations there. Mm -hmm. Which is very unique actually because <laughs> to my best knowledge, um, there's very little data sets anywhere in the world where, which has the combination of genetics and microbiome mm -hmm. and the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that makes the database itself very kind of, you know, interesting for further research and further investigation. Mm -hmm. And this is where I believe a lot of new discoveries um, is going to happen, especially for the multifactorial diseases, which mm -hmm. are, you know, are not necessarily related with one reason, which might have multiple triggers, you know, multiple factors that affect the onset of the condition. And how many data are there in a data set? Well, we have dozens of thousands of samples. I mean, we're not disclosing the exact volumes, but it's mm -hmm. like dozens of thousands of people mm -hmm. who've already done our tests, yes. Okay. Well, uh, can you tell me more about your team? Yeah, I mean, the team is great. Mm -hmm. um, we are about 75 people right now, mm -hmm. like full-time employees. About half of these are scientists um, in human genetics, bioinformatics, microbiome research. Um, we are the nerdiest nerds <laughs> <laughs> in the world, I would say, mm -hmm. uh, in those areas. So mm -hmm. it's it's really a killer team of you know people who have a huge record. In, and they have a lot of academia. PhDs. Yeah, we have people. We have plenty of people with PhDs. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have mine yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I can assure you that the R&D director keeps trolling me for this every day. <laughs> so yeah, I won't rest. He won't rest until I have mine someday. But yeah, it takes it takes a while. Okay, so what was uh, the most difficult thing for you in business? Well, 
I can just give you a huge list right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't know if you have time for this. But <laughs> well, one of there the most, list? yeah, well, a very difficult list is, um, I would say, growing the company in Europe mm -hmm. is, is a very challenging um, task because Europe is a very, like, it's, it's a scattered market. It's, there's no, you know, unified language and there's no unified regulatory environment. And you mm -hmm. have to, when you, when you go from one country to another, it's basically opening up a new market. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's quite a challenging business, but a very interesting business development task, uh, which we're doing right now. I mean, it, it does create a barrier. But you have very good B2B sales manager. Yeah, we have a great team. Upstairs. We have yeah. a great team, yes, <laughs> great team. <laughs> sitting, the city upstairs working mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know, compared with the United States, which is like, you know, huge market, little boundaries, same language, mm -hmm. of course, different special like like special mm -hmm. um, features in, in different joggers but in Europe that is even worse than that so I mean you have every country has its own regulation especially in medical device mm -hmm. um, and you have to account for this uh, but also logistics um, language so localization is a must especially for the medical device industry um, and like even growing the, the brand awareness um, is also is also very different mm -hmm. because of because of the different language. So it's basically you have to start from almost from scratch when you enter the new when you enter in, in, into the new geography. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a challenge. But I mean, it's it's a it's an interesting problem to solve. It's life. <laughs> it's life. <laughs> you have to evolve. Okay. So maybe you will wish something to those people who are just starting their own business. In yeah. UK. Yeah, I mean, I got lots of advice for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, well, first of all, try to be global. I think that's, um, you know, that's the only way of survival at the moment. So since the very beginning, set the goal for you um, to choose the right market. If, and of course, it's always good to be, you know, to try, at least trying to be global and try to reach the global markets. Um, set big goals. Um, don't forget about uh, leisure and because mental health among entrepreneurs is a huge issue right now. I don't know if you're talking about this, but I mean, there's a huge issue with that. So I think there are a lot of startups who are developing life work balance. Yeah, you have to be, I mean, as an entrepreneur, you have to, you have to balance yourself. Right? Mm -hmm. So don't forget to rest. Um, yeah. And you know, set big goals, get them, but don't forget about you. Don't forget about your health. Um, yeah, guys, stay healthy. Stay healthy. That's my that's my biggest advice to entrepreneurs. I mean, and just get things done. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, and do business in AI. Do business in AI. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What was your biggest mistake in business? Well, uh, I mean, of course, we had plenty of mistakes, uh, and, and as you test different hypotheses, you necessarily make mistakes. Mm -hmm. One, I can tell you one of the funny, one of the few funny ones. Um, so that was um, the mistake we made with, you know, building these kits mm -hmm. of ours. So originally, when we were selling the kits in Russia, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen them, but they have a, they are of a different shape. Mm -hmm. so they they have a different form. They're round. <laughs> they're, not, <laughs> they're not round. I mean, they're more like square. Uh -huh. So not like that. Not that slim. Mm -hmm. All right. So. And we were, and I was taking this box from Moscow to the UK, mm -hmm. trying to figure out whether it will fit in the mailboxes, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, basically, the way after you do, after you collect your sample, what you have to do is you have to throw that into the mailbox. Mm -hmm. And so I brought this kit um, from Russia to to London, and I was walking around the city with my partner. We were trying to find the mailbox, and I was like, finally, I found something like which to me that looked like a mailbox, mm -hmm. and I approach to it and I said, oh, look at this. I mean, it perfectly fits <laughs> because it, I mean, it was absolutely fine. I mean, that fit per perfectly. And he told me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you want to people start putting these things in the trash boxes, <laughs> then it's fine because what you're doing is, I mean, this is a trash bin. <laughs> okay. So of course, turned out they did not fit any mailbox in London. And we had to completely redesign, like, you know, build a new form factor, like a new shape of the box, mm -hmm. something I had no idea. I mean, I had just had no ideas this week. And you lost a lot of money on that? Well, not too much money. I mean, it's just, you know, a funny story on how... Just one round Yeah, you have to account for, you know, so many unexpected things when you when you launch in the new markets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's it. I mean, uh, besides that, there's, of course, lots of, lots and lots of other things that I, you know, thinking today, I 
I think my, we might have done better. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the end, I mean, this is what you get running the business. You face uncertainties, you solve them, and I mean, you make mistakes sometimes. Some, sometimes it's normal. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was very. It was a pleasure.